everyone. Hi. 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 <laughs> it's Eve and Amanda here from the PB team and um, we're very excited this week because we've got a guest for our live as you yeah. can see. Um, so this is Justina, so she um, runs a Gino franchise salon in Ellsfield uh, in South West London. So yeah, we just thought we'd get Justina in and have a bit of a chat today mm. about, about running a franchise really, about um, kind of the pros and cons, what it takes and um, just yeah, what it's, how it differs really from running a salon. Mm. So, yeah, it'd be great if you could tell us a little bit about what the benefits are of becoming a franchisee with a skincare mm -hmm. brand. I think the benefits mainly is help. So it's someone holding your hand throughout the whole process. So I had to very quickly make a decision to open my own salon because I found out I was being made redundant and literally within four months the salon was open and up and running. Wow, quick so <laughs> everything, yes, but that's the thing, because you've got the brand behind you and they've done it before, there is a timeline, there is everything in detail, what needs to be done, what even legal things and down to like you need to have coffee for your customers, you know, mm. you've got all of this planned. So all you have to do is just implement the plan. It's mm. no, yeah, yeah, yeah so mm. it's a lot easier, I found. Mm. Yeah. So great, particularly if you are on a tight turnaround. It's yes, amazing. yeah, yeah, because I just had to grab the, grab the opportunity, I thought. Yeah. So. And are they quite good with the business plan as well in terms of helping you with like builders and set up and all that kind of stuff? Yes, so I had my own builders because um, my friend is a builder, but I know further down the line, the brand is looking into actually having someone who they recommend. So then they'll have literally a team going in and helping you do everything. But what happens actually is, once you've got your premises and, and they've accepted the premises, they give you a 3D plan of how the premises should look like that you can pass on to your builders, mm. even down to the finishes and yeah, how to paint, what to paint, what to do, where the lights go. Yeah. Quite really helpful. Yeah. So getting yeah. some support along the way. Yes. Yeah. Um, so on the flip side of that, are there any kind of challenges, I suppose, that come with running a franchise? Um, yeah. Anything that you didn't expect yeah. or anything you've learned along the way? I think challenges would be just the same as if running any other business. So there's always problems with staffing. You're in customer service, so you come across you know, lots of sure. different clients and, and <laughs> lots of different demands. So I don't think they're that different to a franchise. Um, I've been with Gino for so long, I don't know any different. But I know that for some people, franchise will dictate what brands you can use yeah. and I think that might be for some people mm. they might not be able to overcome that they want to do lots of mm. different treatments mm. yeah when, when different did you open your salon? it'll be Still four long. years this November okay. yes mm. yeah and is there like a certain amount of money that you need to have behind you to set up a franchise like what's the kind of mm -hmm. financial cost of it yeah so I think if you were thinking about setting up a salon anyway, you know, you would have thought about the property and the build out and everything. So that doesn't change. What changes is there is an initial franchise fee you have to pay, uh, which varies obviously from <coughs> franchise to franchise. Um, and the furniture, because it's supplied by them as well, it's slightly more higher quality. So mm. um, yeah, slightly different, slightly more cost yeah, mm. to that. But other than that, yeah. What about um kind of finding staff and running a team? Is there any differences there in terms of how you'd recruit or how you'd build your business? Well, recruitment is very much up to me, but I feel like the having the, the brand behind me, the support of the brand, they help with training. So obviously people go on training to train in the main head office with the brand, but also I've got extra support one on one. Um someone coming into the salon. Um as far as recruitment, I think that's still something we're looking at, but mm -hmm. yeah. And is there anything that surprised you when you opened your franchise that you didn't necessarily know about the process or that you think it'd be good for people to be aware of if they are thinking about doing it? I don't think it would be franchise specifically, mm -hmm. but just setting up your own business mm -hmm. and the challenges <laughs> that come with that. So um, dealing with cancels and business rates and, and all of that. So do your research, research mm -hmm. your area that you're in and your, you know, who you're with and what, what the sort of extra costs might be. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what was it initially that made you want to go down the franchise route rather than opening your own salon independently from that? Yeah. Yeah. Because I was, like I mentioned, I've, I've been working with Gino previous to setting up my salon. I was with them for seven years, and it was a salon that was doing exclusively Gino as well. Okay. So I knew that it can work, that if you're committed to having one brand, 
and just concentrate on what you do best and do that one thing so become specialized in certain area um i was confident that that i will be sure, fine yeah. yeah yeah so because i knew the brand from yeah before. So yeah. I suppose if someone's thinking about it, it's really worth getting to know that brand inside out before yes. you mm. yeah. make move. Yeah, yeah. I would definitely say that because I knew that I can make it work for my clients, but it mm. just depends what you want to do in your mm. business. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> do you think it makes it easier on the retailing side as well if you've just got one brand that you're really passionate about? Definitely. And I don't know if it's because I love the brand <laughs> but that that would be for anyone so I haven't found it's it's a constant topic isn't it about mm. e-commerce and whether that's taking away from us yeah but I just think if you're passionate about about the brand whatever you're doing you'd want to feel like you're selling to your clients mm. we we stock a full range of Gino we've got every product and it all sells that's my, my biggest now outgoing monthly is actually reordering retail stock. Oh, wow. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you mentioned that, in, have you found any other kind of changes in the industry or challenges, I suppose, since you've started? Maybe not necessarily to do mm -hmm. with running a franchise, but as you've been open a while, have you had to kind of adapt the way that you do business or seen any kind of trends or changes yeah. come into the market? I think it's watching the trend. So the trend recently, it's all about the vegan organic beauty, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. and and packaging. The clients being more aware about packaging, and this is where because I'm tied to one brand, it's not like I can switch. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. yeah. So when I'm asked these questions, I have to find a way to answer them, and mm -hmm. I think that's that's where the the challenge is because it's not like I can go no, they do the packaging. I'm going to swap them. Yeah, sure. yeah, um, yeah. Yes, and I cannot go for an organic brand. So, um, yeah, I've, I've sort of. <laughs> I know the brand, so I know how to talk myself out of it, but I think that's. <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. But I suppose that's it. I suppose if you do specialise and you have one brand or one kind of setup, it's just having being confident that that is your market yes. and that is your niche yeah. and trends. Yeah, just being confident in what you do yeah. and what you sell. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have you found that you've had a lot of customers then asking about packaging and plastics? Because obviously single-use plastics and the damage mm -hmm. it does on the environment has been such a big thing yeah, at the yeah, moment. Big in the news. And everyone's talking about it. And yeah, I just wondered whether you've had consumers coming to you and mm. asking about those things. Yes, not not that many, I think. But it, it always comes in waves. You know, when the parabens happened, mm. and you know took them out eventually. But that was that was a big thing. Then when microbeads happened, yeah. and again, you know, reformulated everything mm. to make that happen so I'm confident that they will take that into account as well yeah and that will change the packaging mm. so yeah I think it is kind of slowly coming into the market isn't it I think more mm. as you say more beauty consumers are being aware of it more salons are asking for it now and there are more brands reacting to yes. it so I think it's, they have it's to all respond. a process yes. that yeah. takes time but yeah, yeah it's yeah. interesting and so much of it is driven by the government as well Absolutely. so I think until they put measures in place you know mm. Things tend to follow quite quickly after it, like with microbeads. Yes. That was yeah. a very quick turnaround, I think. For yeah, and now a lot the, of the, did it come in there from twenty twenty about the yeah, plastic, yeah. plastic yeah. straws and, and cotton plastic, plastic cotton buds. So yeah, yeah. Mm. so that so yeah. Yeah. organically. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. So it's been absolutely lovely having you here. Yeah, thank you for coming and joining us, and thank you everybody for joining us on the live as well. And um, so this will be going up on our IGTV and on our Facebook. And if you do have any other questions. Just uh, direct message us and we will come back to you with some answers. But until then, we'll see you next Thursday.